Lady C looked like winning that gold for Britain. Keith Muster and Tony Morgan from Essex in their last international competition had sailed brilliantly to keep the overall lead for more than a week. Two quite different characters. I was much more the introvert and Tony the extrovert. We felt that if we wanted to go to the Olympics, our background probably wouldn't allow us to be invited to go to the Olympics. We had to earn our place. Being quite determined to earn our place, we looked at the problems that we had, which was weight, mainly a little lack of weight. We felt the only way to address that was to be fitter than our competitors. So we went up to the local school uh, one evening and asked the PE instructor um, <coughs> how we could get fitter. And he, um, he said, well, what, what do you do? What body movements? And we told him, and he put us through a process of um, exercises, saying, if you do that every day, between now and the Olympics, then you'll win a medal. Uh, so we did it every day. Christmas Day, Boxing Day, basically it was the start of uh, circuit training, as we now know it today. <laughs> Keith and I were regarded as a couple of people below the salt on the table. Um, and one day, uh, we were chastised verbally by the most senior person in the class saying, but I, but I hear you train, and we don't do that. And uh, I said, well, I don't know what you mean. No, he said, I've heard already you do a hundred press-ups or something. And he said, I think this is a very inappropriate way to behave, which is really amusing when you look at, uh, at what has happened subsequently. We worked hard and tacking and jibing and spinnaker hoisting and dropping and everything else. We were a fantastic team together. There was never any question about, you know, who was in charge. Keith was the boss. I don't think we, I, we rarely fell out. If we fell out at all, it was about silly nonsense, you know. And we welded together extremely well, indivisible, absolutely. At the opening ceremony, you were waiting outside the stadium for many hours. And when you went in through the main entrance to the arena. Uh, it, it was a tremendous shock. The noise and, and atmosphere hit you like a brick wall. It, it, was, it was fantastic. Up on the big notice board was the Olympic motto. Uh, and I forget the exact wording, but it was to the effect that um, um, uh, the spirit is to participate, not to win. And I thought, Rupa, after that, <laughs> I've come here just to participate. You come here to win. So not winning was, um, was uh, uh, quite a disappointment. I think I had the temerity to say to Keith, we've done it! And he said, look over your shoulder. And we could see New Zealand coming out. They'd taken a wild flyer into the, right into the harm ring and, and were coming out and we could see what was going to happen. They, I don't know how many uh, nanoseconds in front of us, but enough to count. Family group here, and warmest congratulations to the boys who won our first yachting medal since 1956. Tony Morgan, Keith Musto, the helmsman, and both the wives here as well. Well, it is congratulations, but I'm sure that you must be a little bit disappointed. You'd set your heart slaving away for the last two years on winning gold. Yes, that's a fair comment, Peter. Um, but nevertheless, New Zealand didn't really deserve to win. They've sailed very, very well indeed. And it's, uh, it's been a long way to come to find out that another hemisphere was sailing just that bit faster than we were. You had Keith to beat New Zealand today and to be on the safe side of the United States as well. What happened out there today? Uh, the wind dropped off just before the start and we weren't going very fast at all. Uh, there's a very lumpy sea, uh, which I found extremely difficult to sail through. That was all there was to it. <laughs> Halfway through the seven races, with four races gone, you were leading the field and we were all saying, my word, uh, gold is coming, and you must have felt it yourself, although you wouldn't dare say so. When did things really start to go wrong? How did, how did they go wrong? Well, they really went wrong yesterday because it did seem that we'd got the whole thing sewn up. We led for almost the entire race and New Zealand came up on a hell of a lucky wind shift when, in fact, we thought they were so far down the drain they wouldn't even see us again. Yeah. 
Keith, uh, let's get away from the racing for a moment. I'd like to ask you this one. All the boys in Tokyo, in the village there, are saying that the yachtsmen out at Oizo, do you call it? Yes. Have got the very best billet of the lot, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is, yes. The, the facilities that uh, we're living under are excellent. I couldn't speak highly enough of them. Uh, the food is magnificent, uh, and the spirit with all the competitors is, is jolly good too. Yeah. You couldn't... Um, couldn't better it anywhere. It's the best meeting I've ever been to for organisation uh, and um, an anything like that. Yeah, that's true. Tony, it's a bit unusual um, to have wives coming right across the world to a yachting regatta like this. Uh, must be a great treat for them. Well, this was, uh, this was part of a deal made when we started off on this road two and a, <laughs> two and a half years ago. They demanded that if they were going to put up with all the privation, they should come out. As it turned out, it was a bit like taking coals to Newcastle. I'm going to get a comment from the girls about that. What about that one? I don't think any comment at all. <laughs> no comment. No, 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 no. Keith, it's a tough job, isn't it, sailing one of these things? It is quite hard, yes. <laughs> um, we, we've worked very hard uh, on the physical side um, of the sailing to make ourselves fit enough to do well. Um, this is necessary for us in particular because we're so light. Uh, compared with some of the other people and in heavy weather we're very hard pushed well what happens tonight a little celebration uh, silver's worth celebrating isn't it oh i think so i've had my first cigarette and i think the man that first man that sees me under the table tonight has got some way to go <laughs> <laughs> good luck to one and all thank you very much indeed thank you it was just a, a wonderful experience total compatibility with a very, very unusually fine sailor. I mean, he's a very special human being, Keith, as everybody who meets him would. You know, I mean, I meet sailors all over the world, and they all say, oh, God, Keith Muster is just the very best. What I wanted to do when we came back was to make sure it was just another event, another moment in your life. And uh, um, I was painting a big wall at home. Whilst I was painting it, I suppose I was thinking about the sailing uh, and the Olympics. And I got a hammer and a nail and the medal and I took the ribbon off it, put the nail in the middle of the wall and, and hung the medal on it and stood back and looked at it. And I thought, that's a good place for that medal. And I went down and called Jill, my wife, and said, how about putting that medal there? Because it's never been on display, it isn't now. Uh, and she looked at me and laughed, said, don't be silly. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. But I suppose I didn't explain myself, because to me it wasn't ridiculous. It represented one moment of your life. And it was a moment that shouldn't manage the rest of your life. Keep it in perspective. Uh, the rest of your life has to be lived. There are other things to do.